Oh, and there is great controversy in terms of the power of science to encompass everything or have certain limits. And I come to you as a historian as well as an astronomer to look at both sides of science, to first look at its scope and its sweep, and then also its limits. I think it's useful to think about science in terms both of foresight and understanding. Foresight is the ability of science to predict things. Uh, it's uncanny the way the Newtonian uh, laws of motion can predict everything from the falling of an apple to uh, getting a spacecraft uh, to Jupiter. Uh, but there are aspects of science that don't really uh, link into that very well. Evolution, for example, uh, is great on understanding and pretty limited in terms of numerical prediction of things. But I think specifically of the way in which uh, people in the 17th century were looking for proofs of the motion of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you prove this? And Galileo wanted desperately to have a physical proof for the motion of the earth. And many people assume that with his telescope, he found those proofs. No, he founded things, he found things that were very persuasive. In his Dialogo, he essentially made the Copernican system intellectually respectable. Mm. But he didn't prove the motion of the Earth. Even Newton was somewhat short on that. But the predictive power of Newtonian mechanics was so successful and so powerful that when what we now think of as the proofs for the motion of the Earth, for example, Foucault swinging his famous pendulum in the Pantheon in Paris. There was not dancing in the streets the next day that at last we know for sure that the earth rotates. Mm. Or earlier when the so-called annual parallax, this shift in the positions of stars because of the earth's motion around the sun, when that was found. By the time those discoveries were made, it was no longer a live issue in arguing about it. It was because the understanding, the persuasion of the Newtonian picture was enough to get people to accept this. Now, if we look at science today, let us take evolution as an example. There is a... Uh, firm psychological acceptance by the majority of evolutionists that mutations are strictly random. And it is mutations that drive the variation that makes sure. the evolution possible. But you know, that is not a scientific uh, conclusion. It is that the mutations, for the most part, certainly act as if they are happening randomly, but it's not something that can be proved. It is part of an understanding, and it's a picture of understanding, but it may not be true. It may be from a theistic uh, perspective that God as sustainer of the universe is in some fashion uh, essentially subliminally making possible these uh, mutations. Uh, the fact that we're here suggests that there has been an extraordinary process that looks as if it was guided purposefully. Some people would say that's design, but design with no purpose, because it is the mutations itself that creates its own design by the survival. All I'm saying is that there are important assumptions mm -hmm. being made foundational ones that are not necessarily the case. Yeah, no, that, that's very interesting. Now, if we, if you look as a historian 
you certainly see the, the scope of science increasing over, over the centuries, where more and more is being subsumed within the scientific uh, way of thinking. That you see this progress in, in, in all fields, that science is answering more and more questions. In a way, uh, science is like looking at a musical score and being able to calculate the harmonies and the overtones and the tension and the release and so on, you can understand all of that uh, uh, mechanically. You could probably write a computer program, mm. but it probably wouldn't be Mozart. <laughs> and it would not do the same thing as your psychological appreciation of the music and what it does mm. for you. Well, this very naturally brings up the limitations of science. So how can we begin to craft the boundaries of not just where science is today, because that's a, a technology question. I'm not interested in the technology. I'm interested in the fundamental uh, metaphysics, if you will, of science, in terms of what are, if any, the fundamental limits you're beginning to describe some in terms of science can describe the process, but not the psychological emotion and the feeling and the art of the music. Uh, but, but how can we begin to define these limits? Well, it's fuzzy and it's tricky. But recognizing that there are limits is a good place to begin. Well, certainly that's controversial by itself. And, I, <laughs> and, and some people would deny that totally, that they would say that if it's not ultimately susceptible to a scientific method, it is ultimately not knowledge. It may be, uh, it may be a finger painting or it may be uh, 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 some uh, uh, literature or poetry, but it's, it's not knowledge in the sense of, of, of uh, uh, what is really true about the universe. Nothing can be knowledge unless it's scientific. That's a view. And so I understand that's a view. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a, perhaps a credo. It's perhaps uh, uh, <laughs> coming from men of faith, of a rather different faith than mine. Yes. Okay, fair enough. But to explore that is why I like looking at the boundaries of science, because that's a critical question. Does science have those kinds of boundaries? So what would they be? Where can you say that science can go but no further, even in principle? Well, there's a whole realm, an important realm, of feelings, of love, of poetry, of music, of art, that doesn't really fall under science. I remember asking Carl Sagan about the question of love. I said, what about the love for your wife? And he said, it's all chemical. <laughs> But if love is more than chemicals, what then can we say about the limitation of science? I'm still convinced that there is a metaphysical realm that goes well beyond physics and physical science, which has to do with our fundamental beliefs of what the world really is like. And it encompasses uh, many of these issues that for science become very problematic. So I think in terms of a grander view of the universe than just what you can make with predictions and even to some extent what you can do with understanding.